Nobody wanted these guys. Nobody recruited these guys. We didn't have an office. We didn't have a football. We didn't have a helmet. Arbuckle over the middle. Keith Rucker. Touchdown, Panthers. Something happened going into that Ball State game. They began to trust one another. Time in the pocket to find his man, Robert Davis, who breaks away. You get knocked down, you got two choices. You can lie there and wallow, or you can get yourself up and do what you're supposed to. Georgia State football can really explode as a power in the non-power five. It's a very bright future for the football program. For over a hundred years, Georgia State University has stood. The football team, only six. And not one person believed that the team would come so far in such a short amount of time. It was the will of the students. The students voted on it. And Dr. Carl Patton conducted the testing. And a very high percentage, I think it was around 85% of the students voted in favor of football and voted in favor of increasing the student athletic fee. And that's a big deal because it's hard to pay your way through school these days. When there was that kind of consensus, it was obvious to my wife Carolyn and to me that this was something that needed to happen. We've come in just an incredible distance in not very much time at all. The decision to play football at Georgia State was made by my predecessor, Carl Patton. Uh, when I arrived January 1st, 2009, we did have a coach, Bill Curry, and I think he had one recruit. As Coach Curry told me the first time we met, we don't have uniforms, we don't have a place to practice. Uh, we think we're going to play in the Georgia Dome. So, you know, this has been, you know, I've been with the program uh, since Coach Curry started building it. Tell me about those first years of the program. Well, my most vivid memory is driving up and down 75 and 85 looking for lights, meaning football stadiums. I knew where most of the high schools were because I grew up in Atlanta. I was looking for a field for us to practice, and we couldn't find one. We didn't have an office. We didn't have a football. We didn't have a helmet. We didn't have a locker room or a training room. And so we had to start literally at ground zero and build. And that's the most vivid and abiding uh, image that sticks with me through this thing. But a lot of people helped us, and we found a way to get those things done, and we got started, and here we are. You'd have to look at the history of Georgia State University. It was a commuter school, 100%. Students back in the day did not come to Georgia State necessarily to be a part of a fraternity or to get involved in athletic programs. They came to go to school and get an education so that they could support their families. And I'm talking back in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and even into the 80s. It's really only started to change in the last 15 to 20 years. And in the South, one of the things, in my opinion, that you have to do in order to offer students that traditional experience of going to college when you're not in a small town with rolling green hills and lots of green trees, you gotta offer on-campus housing and you gotta play college football. Adding football at Georgia State was a conversation that went on for years. Didn't get a lot of traction with the, uh, with the administration for one reason or another through the years. Jerry Ratcliffe or Tom Lewis I really felt like it would be beneficial to the overall growth and maturity uh, of the university. And so they were able to persuade Dr. Patton to uh, pursue it and look at it and, and start the program. Uh, it was not my decision to start football, uh, but one thing I, I you know, committed to from the beginning, if we're going to play, we're going to play right. It's, there's no reason to play just to play. Having a team is to compete and to be successful. You know, being in Atlanta and being surrounded by the top college programs and the pro sports that we're surrounded by, administration understood that we've got to put as good a product on the field and on the court as we can. And with adding football and now making NCAA tournaments and making college football bowl games brings Georgia State up to speed with a lot of other universities around the country. Obviously, it's, uh, it's exciting to be in a bowl game, especially six years after the formation of the program. I think sometimes people get a little bit impatient and think that you should be incredibly competitive right away. That's people's you know, basic DNA and, and we're all competitive people. But to watch a process evolve and develop and especially the way 
Um, this process here at Georgia State has been expedited. People will tell you that it's normally a 10-year process to start from scratch and to be a competitive FBS program. And so to do it in our third year at the FBS level and really only the sixth year of, of having a program has been a truly inspiring fall for us uh, within the athletic program. To me, it's just a, a tremendous part of, you know, of my life and my time at Georgia State is to be part of starting something from the beginning. Uh, that first game in the Georgia Dome in August of 2010, I'll never forget. And I had tears in my eyes as I watched people stream into the Georgia Dome. It was a very emotional moment, particularly because I've, I've come to know so many alumni who have come up to me and said, you know, I've waited 50 years for this. You know, this is something I've always dreamed about. And we never had it. Or, you know, I've always gone to work on Monday morning and my colleagues who went to Tech or UGA or Southern are talking about, you know, how their teams did. And I didn't have anything to talk about. Now I have this. Now, now Georgia State's there. And I can tell you, they're all much happier now that they can actually talk about it in a way they can talk about how their team went out and won and is going to a bowl game. When their back was against the wall, there was a change in the Panthers. They learned how to trust each other. They learned how to play like a family. It's not just football. When you come to play college football, you're spending so many hours with your team and you're spending so many hours with your team and your coaches that you don't have the opportunity to make a lot of friends outside. The guys on your team are the people that you know, they're the people that you eat with, they're the people you talk with, that you go places with. So tell me what is the why that you speak about. Coach Miles, he emphasized one week, I think it was after the Arkansas State game, um, he said, what is you guys' why? And he put it up on the board. And I think that kind of sunk in for a lot of people because you were thinking about what do you really do this for? A lot of people, it may be their family, maybe for themselves, it may be for the things that we get on the team, but you know, it, it made you really think about why you're really out here waking up at 6 a.m. every day, you know, doing these hard workouts in the winter, summer, spring, everything like that. It makes you realize why this part of your life is so important. And I think that really emotionally connected everybody and we all figured that out for each other. A lot of us shared it with each other. That really took us off from there. And, you know, it wasn't just playing football at that point. It was, you know, emotionally connecting with everybody and getting a job done that we all been doing for our whole lives. Seeing other people's family and friends out there fuels me. If I see Channon's mom out there, if I see another teammate's mom, I treat him like they're my mom. So if that's his why, the reason why he plays, that also becomes my why. So now I don't, not only playing for my family, I'm playing for his family, I'm playing for so-and-so's family, so other, so on and so forth. It just makes our bond that much stronger. We're all playing for the same reasons out there. They made me feel like family. Luke Hewitt is one of the best recruiters I know because he really made me feel like this is where I needed to be. Just from being a freshman my first day here and kind of being nervous around the guys and you know them just embracing me, making me feel like you know I was a part of something special. And this is a brotherhood. They will actually get me up, wake me up every Sunday, knocking on my door. I'm like, man, I'm trying to sleep, you know, leave me alone. But um, it, it turned out for the better. I'm a better person. I feel a lot better. Uh, I really thank those guys for that. After my freshman season in high school, shortly after in February, uh, my mother passed away. And it was really unexpected and it really kind of hit my family really hard. But it was a big growing moment for me. And ever since then, everything that she had told me and she had preached to me and everything that she was, I started to finally listen to and become after she had passed away. I'm so far away from home now, but she's the person that's always been at my games, the person I've always played for, and so I know she's with me wherever I go. What commitments have they made to you guys as coaches? And, you know, they're just constantly on us and they want the best out of us, so they're gonna want us to reach our maximum potential, so they're on us every day, whether it's meetings, uh, paying attention, whether it's in the weight room, on the field, they're just constantly on us because they just want the best for us. And they told us they're gonna push us to our, to our father's limits. I mean, and treating us like, you know, the pros and everything like that, giving us the freedom, but also locking down when we needed to, and telling us that we have to focus at certain times and understanding that we are still students and stuff like that. We have to understand that, you know, this is a part of what we do, and um, they really emphasize being able to uh, mentally lock into what you need to do. The coaches do a great job, and we're all treated as equal. It's not like there's a coach and he's over us. It's kind of like he's a father figure to us. They do a great job with keeping us together, having us do fun things, team events. And um, that's how we uh, gelled over the summer and spring. And that's how we became a really tight football team. It, it's just been amazing. And it's really just a different, it's a different kind of program and a different kind of team. 
and it was really what drew me to Atlanta and drew me all the way across the country to come to Georgia State. It's not just a game. No, it's a lot more than a game. I had a high school coach at College Park High named Bill Badgett. We used to laugh at him because every day he told us football is just life marked off in 100 yards. Well, he was right. You get knocked down, you got two choices. You can lie there and wallow, or you can get yourself up and do what you're supposed to. I can go to South Central Los Angeles, as I have, and recruit a young man, and then I can go to the hills of North Georgia and recruit another young man. They come in the locker room, they don't like each other. And we put them in the same colored shirt, and we go out and we sweat. Sometimes we bleed, and we drive ourselves. They come in exhausted. You can't even pull your shirt off in football after practice without help. So you turn to your teammate, this guy that you don't like, hey, how about a pull? And you help each other with the jerseys and you start to realize after a while that that sweat smells the same on everybody. And when you get busted in the mouth, that blood's the same color as your brother. And those two guys who thought they hated each other become brothers, they love each other, and it lasts the rest of your life. That's the best stuff about football. It's a way of life, you know, it, it, it's a way to uh, teach each other discipline, commitment, teamwork, and coming together with people. You know, you, you don't remember all the scores and all the games, but you remember all the people in that locker room. It brings everybody together. It's a common bond, but, you know, it teaches a lot of values that will carry over into the real world. We've got great young men that have persevered through very hard times, difficult times. And you can't do that if you don't have high character. When things go bad and you're a low character uh, and not real intelligent, you'll start pointing fingers and blaming everybody else. These guys found a way to fight themselves out of a hole, you know, the losing hole. And they found a way to come together. They understood the message and they accepted the message and believed in it and went out and performed it. And it shows that humans can do anything when they put their minds to it. You know, and they found a way to come together to do that. They knew they couldn't do it one at a time. They had to do it together as a team. And then when the team buys in to that kind of acceptance and brotherhood, the first thing you notice about the team is it's almost impossible to beat them. So from high school to college to the NFL, those things happen with good teams. You know, I think the, uh, the thing that always amazes me about teams, especially successful teams, is when they build a bond of trust with each other. Uh, kids trust themselves. They trust their teammates and then they trust their coaches. And I think if you ask the guys and you ask the coaches, that word trust gets used a lot with this group. And I think it's, uh, it's really uh, apropos for, uh, for what they've been able to, to accomplish. In 2013, the Panthers were 0-12. 2014, 1-12. And 11. They knew that going into the 2015 season, they'd have a chip on their shoulder. They knew that they had something to prove. We, we call ourselves all the misfits. Nobody wanted these guys. Nobody recruited these guys. You know, young kids always think they're going to get recruited. And then when it comes to the end, they have no place to go. Georgia State was really a lot of these kids, whether they tell you the truth or not, most of these kids really had no option other than to come to Georgia State. And so they kind of labeled themselves the misfits and they play with a chip and that's kind of what we've embraced and that's kind of how we roll. I was with the Detroit Lions the last five years before coming here to Georgia State. I felt like I was a little bit of a misfit because I've coached at a high level for a lot of years. I couldn't find anything. Trent Miles gave me an opportunity here. So I told these guys, if you listen to me, I've done this and I've done it pretty well for years and years at every level and I can make you guys the best receiver group in the conference. They bought into that, and I coached these guys the exact same way that I coached Calvin Johnson and everybody at, at the Detroit Lions for five years. I brought the tapes down with me, and we looked at that, and we did the same exact drill work. Everything was coached just like they were pros. And here we are today, and we are the best receiver core in, in the Sun Belt Conference, without doubt. You know, the reality of it is we started the season uh, really just trying to hope we could win some games and show how this team is progressing and how the program is progressing. And, and I think the halfway mark, we were uh, still questioning how this team was going to perform. As crazy as it made me sound last year when they ended up going 1-11, and I felt they were getting better. There were three games they lost by a field goal at home against New Mexico State, on the road at South Alabama, and on the road to Louisiana Lafayette. Three games that they would have, could have, should have won. 
So there were signs last year that they were getting better and just couldn't get over the hump. And then this year, I felt that this team at least would win anywhere between four and six games. Of course, two of the games I thought we might win, Charlotte and Liberty, we did not win. Something happened in between Appalachian State, which is a 37-3 loss, and a 31-19 win in Muncie, Indiana at Ball State. The defense really just kind of arose to the occasion. We have struggled from stopping teams from scoring. Something happened going into that Ball State game, and a lot of the players have told me in the interviews that I've done that they began to trust one another and they began to continue doing what they were doing, but maybe were a little bit more focused. From the outside looking in, having been an active participant in football for six decades, I can see when a team starts playing close against other good teams, and they almost win the game, and they get disappointed, and they don't quit, and they come back the next week, and then they have a bad game and get blown out, and then they come back and fight again. When you see those things happening, you know that sooner or later it's going to click, and it did. At the beginning of the year, we knew we had talent. We knew we had players that could play, that could compete, and could win. But we, you know, we hit our bumps. We had we had some tough games, some games that we um, thought we would win, we didn't. And you know, you sort of start to get discouraged. But the guys didn't get down. They didn't give up. And then the Texas State team comes along. We're on the road. You know, we're in San Marcos, Texas, and they put up a huge number. Just a super impressive performance. And it just looks like that, that game gave them the confidence, in a sense, to let themselves actually be themselves. You know, get the nerves behind them, get the, uh, the monkey off their back of, of you know, not winning games, having, not having won an FBS game before this year. And ever since that day in San Marcos, Texas, they're playing with super high confidence and they're executing play in and play out, game in and game out, and it's super fun to be part of. So let's go to the Southern game the most emotional game of the season. Right. Bowl eligibility on the line. Yep. Lots of emotion there. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about your fan base and how they helped when you guys were on the field. They helped tremendously. I mean, all the family and friends that we had coming out to that game, it was amazing. You know, I wasn't expecting all those people to come down to Statesboro, but you know, just looking up there and knowing that we had the support of our cheerleaders come in and the band coming because a lot of the times they can't come to the away games because of budgets and stuff like that. But just seeing all those people there and when we scored and stuff like that, um, having all those people cheering for us, it felt really good. You know, Georgia Southern crowd, it was packed. So we, we knew that going in would be the underdog, but we also had a few, a few of our fans travel to the game. So when we looked up and saw our student session and our friends and family and parents, it gave us everything we needed to keep pushing. And, you know, we've been used to being underdogs all season. So, you know, hearing the Georgia Southern crowd booing against us, it just fueled us, and we were just able to keep pushing, and we got the victory. It was an experience for me that I'll never forget. I loved going to Southern. Their crowd was intense. I was so proud of our team, the way we went in there and just took it, so I'm just happy. Coach actually wouldn't talk about the game at all, all um, season, you know, even though everybody was like, oh, Georgia Southern, we'll play them the, um, the last game of the season. He, he never said anything about it, but we knew deep down what, what it was going to have to happen, and it made it even better that if we beat them, we will actually go to the bowl game and uh, we wouldn't have it no other way. Tell us when you knew that Georgia State had that game. I would say when we got off the bus. I have that much confidence in my team. Our, our team is a lot better than our record says. As soon as we got off the bus, I just knew our, our feeling, I knew our quarterback was zoned in. So once he's zoned in, our whole offense is gonna click. And uh, I know the defense came ready to play every week before that, previous to that. So. I just had the ultimate confidence going into the game, and like I said, it just paid off. It actually started before the game. I mean, during the week, we prepared. All the week before that, we had won three games in a row. I, me having the confidence that I have in my own teammates and, you know, this whole program, I knew it, I knew it from jump. You know, at the beginning of the week, the way we prepared, everything that we do, and if I had something to do with it, I knew that we were going to have, you know, a win at the end of that day. I knew that my team was prepared. I knew that I was prepared. So I was just expecting to go out there and uh, keep our win streak going and get another win. Every day of the week, guys were fitting up the option right. Coach Minner did a great job with the scheme, putting guys in places where we had to be. So uh, throughout throughout the week, I knew we were going to win. Did you see the video of the Southern Not State video with the kitten? Yes, it, it, was, <laughs> it was funny, but uh, I'm pretty sure we shut him up now.
You know, the thing about Trent that's always, that's always amazed me, he stayed pretty constant. Um, it certainly was a struggle, you know, starting a program with something he's been through before. I think the experience has helped him. But he stayed pretty consistent. He stayed real consistent with his staff. He stayed real consistent with how he dealt with the players. I never noticed a sign of panic during the year. Coach Miles has been very upfront in the interviews that he's done is that we haven't changed anything. They are doing the same thing they've been doing all year, even going back to the off season. I'm very excited about what Coach Miles has done so far and what his staff has been able to do. And where they've gotten to the young men to the point where not only are they talented athletes and great character guys, good in the classroom, but they're executing as a football team and really playing as a team. Guys like Joe, Joseph Peterson and Robert Davis and Donovan Harden and, and Nate Paxson, just everybody. There's so many leaders on the team that do a great job of keeping everybody going in the right direction. You know, football is a big operation. You've got 120 kids, you've got you know, 15 or so staff members, and so there's a lot of voices and a lot of opportunities. And somebody's got to stand in the middle and, and, and manage that process and lead that process. And, and that's probably the stability of Trent's personality and how he manages that, those relationships. Uh, has been instrumental in how this team has turned itself around. I'm especially grateful to Trent Miles. He didn't have to invite us to come on this trip. He's the coach of the year in the conference, and he should be. And for him to invite us and to, and to, and to welcome us with open arms is another dimension of, of his uniqueness. So I'm grateful to the university, but I'm also grateful to this coaching staff and especially the head coach. They're standing tall, they're standing proud, they're standing up there knowing that when Georgia State goes on the field, it not only has a chance to win, but they expect to win now. And that's a beautiful thing for Georgia State and for those players. The Auto Nation Cure Bowl isn't simply a football game, but it's a week of celebration, recognition, and coming together for a great cause. This group had already put the cart way before the horse and they had a charity partner identified and they wanted to do it for breast cancer research because some of the individuals had uh, mothers and sisters that had been diagnosed with breast cancer and so this group of women, five of them with bandanas on their head that were battling chemo, came to me and said, hey coach we know you got a lot going on but cancer takes no holiday and so that pierced my heart and I went home and told my wife if we can make the game about that then I think that we have something. What do you see in the future of this bowl? What does the future hold? We're going to give some big checks today. You're going to see a big check given by Auto Nation in the second quarter and another check given by the Orlando Sports Foundation in, at halftime. And we just want to set the bar and raise it each year that we have this game. And when there is a cure found, as I say when, do you hope that other other bowls will adopt this theme? Sure, sure. Other diseases? Yeah, uh, Callie, another great thing. I think there is an opportunity to cure cancer if we just stay after it. Uh, we've even talked about that. Hey, when we cure cancer, what are we going to do? Well, well let's, chart, let's go with heart disease. We'll just turn everything from pink to red right. and just go heart disease. <laughs> so go. the cure bowl can last because there's a lot of things out there that need to be cured. What do you anticipate? that this team is going to bring in the future? Well, we're bringing back a lot of starters. We're bringing back a lot of depth. The signing class on the first Wednesday in February is going to be a, an impressive class that will allow us to continue to build and continue this program on the path that it's now started on. So I'm, I'm just super bullish about the future. And so with, uh, with the foundation, with the youth we have and the experience we have and, and really knowing how to win, uh, nothing but the best for the future. Well, I think it's on the rise. I think this is a young team. I think this is a team that has finally believed that they can play with anybody at our level. Georgia State football can really explode and get onto the scene as a power in the non-power five. We went out Monday and Tuesday, and the reception that we got from all these Georgia high schools was phenomenal. It was unbelievable. The recruiting's going to go up. We're going to get better players than we have right now, and so this thing's going to take off. We've had a lot of people, a lot more attention uh, from everybody. So, you know, we actually feel like we have a, a more of a fan base now. And it's, it's exciting to actually know that people want to come and watch you play, want, want, want to see you succeed. So it's just exciting. And, uh, you know, I'm just glad. I'm just happy we beat Southern. Look at our record. Not our record as in this season, but just from where we started. They started, they didn't even have a practice field. They didn't have a weight room. Uh, I know you heard the turn and get it out the mud, so that's exactly what Georgia State did, and they did it for six years. Get more wins. I mean, you know, expanding as a program, you know, getting more recruits in, 
winning seasons from here on out, and that's what I should be expecting from me and the rest of my teammates. People haven't even seen nearly what Georgia State can be. You know, even with this year, our record, it doesn't really show how good of a team that we really are. The sky's the limit. It's a really bright future for Georgia State. Well, we keep growing. It's downtown Atlanta. So, I mean, who doesn't want to be in Atlanta? And now you bring in a good football team, a good basketball team, great athletics. So, you keep every kid in Atlanta. Everything about Georgia State, the progression that it's making as a university, and we're just expanding to become one of the biggest universities, or the biggest university in Georgia, and one of the biggest in the country. And we're constantly building more buildings, more dorms, more classrooms. And now the football program and the basketball program as well, all the athletics are performing so well and are progressing with the university. And just everything in a whole is just going upward and going in the right direction. Well, there's no guarantee in the future in football. Well, I see them going where they want to go. You know, if they want to go on and become a Sun Belt Conference champion, uh, that, that can happen. Everything's in place now. You've got the right administration, you know, we've got the weight room going, you've got a, the right coaching staff, you've got the right student athletes in place. We're on the right track and, you know, the, the, the end being Turner Field. That will help Georgia State enormously, not just in a sport world, but in every way with the student body. The next thing for us is real simple. We need to, uh, to do what we need to do to be able to acquire Turner Field and start building the facilities that you know, an aspirational Division I program has. We've got to keep the program growing with improved recruiting, keep this coaching staff intact, and build a powerhouse. And that's something that's very much within the, the realm of, uh, of likelihood. If we did this 20 years ago, it would have been a very different experience. Minus social media, minus 24-7 sports broadcasting. Basically, that 20 years ago, it would have been three national networks and the local TV news. So you might get a local TV news bite on the six o'clock news if you did well. But now in the, in the world of social media, of streaming media, just round the clock coverage, I, I actually think it makes it much more exciting and in some ways it's actually facilitated or helped our rapid rise. I was just excited to know that in five years we could make it to a bowl game. Me and my family were huge Arbuckle fans. Since 2010, I watched every single game. Regardless of the outcome in tonight's game, Georgia State is a winner here today. I have followed them religiously, and this is like a dream come true. Well, I've seen a big improvement, especially this year. It was exciting back in 2010 when we started a program. Never thought I'd see that since I started going to Georgia State in 1978. My university, my alumni, Augusta University, does not have a football team. So I just love the fact I'm living in Atlanta now, so I'm supporting Georgia State, another university system in Georgia School, and I've seen them come from to almost the bottom to the top now. The kids rebounded, and what a second half of the year we had. I was definitely not expecting this. This is awesome. I'm so glad to be here and to see everything going on. I've been watching them since 2010. Been a season ticket holder ever since. I've been to the top, the bottom, and back to the top now, so I'm feeling good, I'm feeling good. To go from not having helmets, not having uniforms, uh, seven years ago, literally, to playing in a bowl game, that's huge. And it's, it's just, you know, inside it feels great personally, uh, but I'm even more excited for all the people that have been part of the program. Great young men, you know, are out there, um, some of them are in graduate school, out working now. It's just, it's just wonderful to see what, football is able to do for them personally as well as what they're able to do for their university. You guys like to watch Georgia State football? Yes. 